Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I have the Cables Love Throw. If you look at each of these squares, you can see the hearts emerging as these cables are formed and on both ends. And I use two different colors with a very simple, but I believe elegant trim. Now this particular throw, I'm gonna show you some pictures right here that'll give you a better idea of how this looks. Um, this one as is, is made up of 20 squares that are approximately 13 inches by 13 inches. And the entire throw with 20 squares is approximately 59 inches wide by 73 inches long. I have been listening to you all. You always want a larger throw. And so this is one of those square throws. It's great for the summer because you can crochet the squares just 13 inch by 13 inch. You can crochet each of those individually. And in fact, you can make this out of a lighter weight yarn should you want to make it a smaller project, let's say for a baby blanket, just make smaller cottony yarn. And I think you'll be great. It'll be great with that. You can mix up the colors. You can make this a stash buster using up all the yarn in your stash, or you can use some summery colors like I have, or you can even make this a solid color. You can choose to use 20 squares like I did, or you can use 12 squares and make a much smaller lap blanket. You can even use six squares and make a pretty nice baby blanket. So really it's all up to you. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're gonna need. For this project, I'm going to be using Paint Box Yarns Simply Aran. This is an Aran or a worsted or a number four weight yarn. And the number of each color that you need will be written right across the bottom of your screen. And I'll go ahead and give you the information on this yarn. Each of these has 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, or 201 yards of yarn. Um, this is 100% acrylic. And should you need the color numbers, the blue is color number 233. And the champagne color is color number 202. I'm also recommending that you have two crochet hooks. The main hook that I'm going to be using is size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter. And I will be using the smaller hook for the perimeter rounds. And that is size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter. And as always, I'm recommending that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot and a starting chain of 50 chains. And for the record, we're going to make 10 of the blue squares and 10 of the off-white squares. After crocheting the starting chain of 50 chains, we're going to start by working a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. And we're going to work one in each of the next two stitches as well. And in this row, we are setting up the foundation for what we'll be doing throughout the square. So we have three double crochets. The turning chain or the chain two at the beginning does not count as a stitch in the stitch count. We work a half double crochet in the next stitch and then one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So let me go ahead and pause. So we have three double crochets, a half double crochet, and then three double crochets. After that, we are going to work three waddle stitches. And this is how we work these on the foundation row. We work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. So when I say waddle stitch, both in the pattern or in the video, this is what I'm referring to, the combination of these three stitches work together. And on the foundation row, we skip the next two stitches and then we work another one. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet, or simply the waddle stitch, referring to all three of the stitches. 
skip the next two stitches and this is our third wattle stitch and then we skip two stitches and then we're going to work a double crochet in each of the next three stitches. This is setting up the foundation for that central cable. So we have three double crochets. We're going to work a half double in the next stitch. Then we're going to work a double crochet in the next three stitches. And then a half double crochet following that. We're going to repeat that set again. Three double crochets. And then a half double. And then three more double crochets. You'll see when we work the next row why we're doing it in this particular order. Now I'm going to stop to verify that I did what I wanted to do here. We have three doubles, half double, three doubles, half double, three doubles, a half double, and then three double crochets. Now what we're going to do now is going to mirror what we did on the other side. We're going to work three wattle stitches just like before. Skip two stitches. Another wattle stitch which again is that combination of a single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Skip two stitches, and then one more. Let me just stop to verify that we did work three, one, two, three of those. And skip two stitches. And then we're going to work one double crochet and each of the next three stitches. So that's one, two, and three. Half double in the next space. One double crochet in the next three stitches. And we end the row with a half double crochet worked into that last chain. And I'll just say a word about those who prefer to use um, this the single crochet um, foundation. Don't worry about that because when we work the perimeter around the remaining part of this starting chain will be completely covered up with single crochet. So it really, this is the easiest and probably the best way to do these starting chains. Okay, now we're going to turn for row number two, chain two. We're going to skip the first stitch. We're going to work front post double crochets in each of the first stitches. And I'll just give a quick tutorial if you've never done a post stitch. These are nothing to fear. They're actually quite easy. We wrap our hook like we're getting ready to work a double crochet. And instead of working in through the top loops, the hook goes around the body like it's forming a belt. And we just complete the stitch as normal. This again, front post, double crochet. Just wrap the hook around the stitch like you're giving it a belt. Now the half double crochets are going to be worked the way they normally will be by working through the top loops. And these are going to be little spacers in our work to help give our stitching additional definition. So after that half double, we work three more front post double crochets. Now we're going to work in the waddle stitches. And when you're working the waddle stitches, you only work in the chain one space that was formed by the wattle stitch from the previous row. Put the hook in that 
chain one space, and then we form another waddle stitch, which is that single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and we work that in the next three waddle stitches. Again, working only in the chain one spaces. Unless you're working a perimeter round, we do not work in the double crochet or the single crochet of those stitches. Let's pause and take a look at what we have so far. Now we're going to be working stitches for that central cable. We're going to work three front post double crochets over those first three stitches. Half double and then next stitch. And then now this is where we are going to cross our first cable. We're going to skip the first three stitches. In that next half double crochet, we're going to work a half double crochet. Again, half double crochets are always worked in the top loops. Now we're going to work three front post trebles, one over each of the next stitches. I've prepared my hook for the treble crochet. We wrap our hook around that stitch just like we did for the front post doubles and we just complete the stitch. If you need additional stitch support on how to do post stitches, please check my home page and just type in in the search bar front post double crochets or you can type in Celtic Aran stitches and I do have playlists for both right and left handers. So I hope that is helpful to you for any of my projects. All right, so we are making our third front post treble crochet. Now working in front of all those four stitches, the half double and the three front post trebles, we're going to front post treble in each of the three stitches that we skipped, starting with the one that's furthest away and it's going to feel like you're reaching across the room to get to that first stitch, but it is correct. On the second one, and the third stitch. And half double in that next half double crochet. And then we're going to front post double crochet. Okay, back to the doubles, not the trebles. We only use the trebles for crossing in this design. So after working these three front post doubles, I'm going to take a pause and I want you to see how this should look. So we have the three front post double crochets, a half double, and then the treble crochets, front post treble crochets that were crossed a half double, and a three front post double crochets. And this ends with the same way it started. We're going to work only in the chain one space, and we work waddle stitches in each of those three waddle stitches from the previous row. And working over the remaining stitches, we work three front post double crochets. A half double in that half double crochet. And three more front post double crochets. And when you get to the chain, turning chain, we're going to work, just work, working in that entire space, not into a single loop, work a half double crochet. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you should have after two rows. All right, on to row number three. We're going to chain two. And just for the record, these rows will begin and end the same way from
from this point onward. The only thing that's going to be different going forward is what we do in the center. But I will review these sections just another row or two and then we will be focusing primarily on the central cable. Okay, so we're going to chain two. This is for row three. We're going to do back post double crochets. And just real quickly, if you've never worked these, we get ready to work that double crochet. But instead of working in through the top loops, we come in the back door. And it goes around the body of the stitch in this way. Pull up a loop and just complete the stitch. These stitches are actually easier to work if you're in a low lighting situation. Um, it's easier to work these just by using the nerve endings in your fingers than it is if you're having to find the top loops. And so we worked a half double crochet again in that half double crochet and then three more back post double crochets. We come to the waddle stitches and you should know what to do at this point working only in the chain one spaces work that single crochet chain one double crochet which is also called a waddle stitch and the third one you can feel the opening with your thumb and finger as you're holding the fabric when you crochet. I know it looks like I'm just going into nowhere, but you really can feel the opening there as you go along. Okay, so now coming to the cable, we're gonna work back post, double crochets, the next three stitches. Let's give that one another try. half double and the next half double crochet. Now working across the crossed, which were trebles or front post trebles from the other row, we just work back post double crochets over each of those next three stitches just in the order in which they appear. There you go. And in between where the last stitch and the next stitch is the center of the cable where the cables cross, we're going to work just a half double crochet worked in that open space there. And then three more back post double crochets. Okay. Now I did add an additional stitch in here, but for you mathematicians who are concerned about the stitch count, which by the way remains the same throughout the square, I did add one in here, but we're gonna skip this half double crochet here. So thereby maintaining the exact stitch count as we go across. We skip this half double, but we work in the top of the one right next to it. Work a half double in that stitch and then three more back post double crochets. And now we just work waddle stitches in those waddle stitches. Before I finish those, let me just pause and let you see what the back of this looks like. I know it doesn't look like much from this side, but I'll show you in just a second what it looks like from the front side. It makes a lot more sense when the front side is facing. So we are now working those three waddle stitches, one in each of those chain one spaces. After that, we work three back post double crochets half double in that half double crochet worked in the top loops and then three more back post double crochets.
and half double in that turning chain. And this is what it looks like after completing three rows. This is with the back side facing. Now with the front side facing, it looks much better. And you can see the crossed cable more clearly defined in the center. Okay, on to row number four. And for the record, the even rows will always have the front side facing. The odd rows will always have the back side facing. So we're going to chain two. And every time you have an even numbered row facing you, you will always start it the same way. With the chain two, three, front post double crochets. And after a couple of rows, you will see this. You, you won't even have to check check the written pattern on this because you'll just know what to do. And then we work a half double in the top of that half double and then three more front post double crochets. And we come to the waddle stitches again, work in each of those three waddle stitches. So I'll go ahead and work these and then show you the cable. Once we come to the cabling or the columns for the center cabling, we're going to be crossing these again. We're going to skip those first three post stitches. We're going to half double into the half double. Front post treble in the next three stitches. Now I'm going to do or show you what is called a back cross. So I'm going to prepare my hook for a treble. So we're going to work one front post treble in each of these stitches, but we're going to do it working behind these last four stitches. That's the three trebles and the half double. So the way we do that is we bring our hook into this hole from the back side. We come from the back and we come into that hole and we start by working around this stitch. It sometimes is more helpful to pull the cabling down and I usually stick my thumb up there so it makes it much easier to locate and work these stitches. Again, use the thumbkin and tall man finger and locate the stitch this way. So I'm locating it with, with my hands. I'm taking a long time to show you this because this is really important. This is not an impossible stitch at all but it does take some thought the first couple of times that you work it. Again, this is called a back cross, and then we have one more stitch here. I have it located with my fingers. I bring the hook into that hole right there, and then work that third front post treble. This is probably the most difficult part of this entire project, is just working that stitch. Now we work a half double in the next half double crochet. And now we're going to skip the next three stitches. Now we're going to cross these two cables, but we're going to cross them differently. We're going to cross them in the same way that we cross this cable down here by working in the front. And I'll show you that. Skip the next three stitches, half double that next space, front post treble in the next three stitches. Let's try that one again, since it got away from me. Now working in front of these last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in the three stitches that we just skipped. And then I'm going to work the waddle stitch. I'm just going to do this mostly to anchor this so that I can show you the cable. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have at this point. So this is what you should have once you complete that cabling section. Okay, so now for the rest of the row, 
We're going to complete it just the way we did row two with a waddle stitch, a waddle stitch, three front post double crochets, a half double, three front post double crochets, and a half double worked in the turning chain. So go ahead and finish row four. Now we're ready to start row number five, and I'm going to go ahead and just talk you through the beginning of this. We're going to chain two. We're going to work back post over the first three post stitches, a half double, and three more back post double crochets. Work waddle stitches in each of these chain one spaces, and then I'll show you the cabling section. So now we're at the back side facing. This is row five, and this is the cable, the center cable. We're going to work three back post double crochets, and what I'm going to show you here is what you do every time the cable has been crossed and you're working the row that follows that. In between that last stitch and the next stitch, we're going to work a half double crochet in between there, and like I explained on the other row, the stitch count does remain the same. Now we work three more back post double crochets. Skip this half double, work a half double in the next stitch, and this should be the center of the entire cable of the combined. And now we will do three more back post, double crochets, and in between that last stitch and the next stitch, again, this is where the cables were crossed, half double in between, very important. And then three more back post, double crochets. It's very easy to forget these because they're um, leaning the other direction, but make sure that you have a total of 15 stitches. I'm including the half doubles in that stitch count when you work the center cable. After you do that, we go ahead and work those waddle stitches. Make sure you work three of them, three back post doubles, half double, three back post double crochets, and a half double in the turning chain. And so this is what that backside facing cable should look like, which again, doesn't look like much, but when you turn it around, it looks like much more on the other side. So go ahead and finish row five. And after you finish row five, go ahead and chain two and work over this section of row six, which is the same that we've been doing. You'll be working front post double crochets, half doubles, and those three waddle stitches. Now for the cabling part of row six, it's actually the same as row two, but it does look a little bit different because we are at a different place. But I'll go ahead and work this with you. We're going to work three front post double crochets, and then a half double in the half double just know that that stitch is there, even if it's not prominent. Three more front post double crochets. Let's try that one again. It tended to get away from me that time. And a half double in that next stitch. And we do that again. Three more front post double crochets. half double, that half double worked in the top loops, and three more front post double crochets. And then we finish the row with those waddle stitches worked in the chain one spaces, front post double crochets, half double, three more front post doubles, and a half double worked in the turning chain. Let's take a look at that cable, and this is after six rows. So go ahead and finish out row six, and then for row seven, go ahead and start with the chain two, 
three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, and those three waddle stitches. Now we have the back side facing for that center cable for row seven. We are simply going to work back post double crochet, so three of those. This is just like row number three that we've already worked. Then we follow that up with a half double crochet and we do that pretty much across the cabling section. Three back post double crochets, followed by a half double. That's two sets. And then we do another set, three back post double crochets. followed by a half double and then another three back post double crochets. And then after we finish that we go into those waddle stitches. And we continue the waddle stitches, two more of those, and three back post half double, three back posts, and a half double in the turning chain to finish out row number seven. And to begin row number eight, which is actually going to be a repeat of row number four, we're just going to chain two, do those front posts, half double front posts, and those three waddle stitches. And then I'll show you how to cross the cables again for, for row number eight. So now that we can see the cabling, this is row eight, we're about to cross these cables and what we're going to do is these columns are going to be on top, it's going to unfold, we're going to work that back cross again just like we did here and then for this one, this, this column is going to cross and be on top and we will work a front cross where we work in front like I did down here on row four. So essentially this section is a repeat of row number four, but I'm going to go ahead and work this with you. We skip the next three stitches, half double that next stitch, front post treble in the next three stitches, working in front of those four stitches, we're going to come into the back hole here and we're going to work front post trebles in each of these stitches. Again, use those nerve endings that God gave us in our fingers and thumb to help you find these stitches. They really do help a lot. So we're coming in for that second stitch. I've located it. Again, sticking the thumb up like this does help you to form that stitch more easily. And the third stitch is right here. And my fingers are ensuring that it's going around that stitch and not somewhere else. Okay, and so we've completed that back cross, half double in that next half double crochet working in the top loops. Now we're gonna do it slightly differently. Skip the next three stitches, half double, in that next half double. And if you pause at this point, you can tell it looks pretty ridiculous, doesn't look like a whole lot. But once we finish those next three front post double crochets, I'm sorry, I might have said double, these are treble, front post treble crochets. If I do misspeak in these videos, please look at the visuals as to what I'm actually doing. Um, I do have a tendency to err since I am human. Okay, and thank you for your grace and forgiving those moments. Okay, so now working in front of those last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in each of these stitches. Starting with the one furthest away. And these are front post trebles. And then we return to the waddle stitches. And let's take a pause. And you can see this cable developing 
more distinction here. So uh, it, it really does look like something, but you need to complete this section. So for the remainder of row eight, work those waddle stitches. You know what to do. The post stitches, half double in the center of those, and don't forget the half double worked in the turning chain. And then go on to row number nine, where we work the back post stitches and the waddle stitches. I'm not going to give a lot of detailed instruction going forward because you should understand this after eight rows. So go ahead and complete row eight and begin row nine until you get to the center cable. Now for row nine, working at the cable section, we are going to work three back post double crochets. Again, this is a repeat of what we did at the end of row five or the cabling section for row five. After those three back post doubles, we work a half double in between that last stitch and next stitch. Again, that's the center where the cables were crossed. And then three more back post double crochets. Just as a reminder, we only use treble, front post trebles when we are crossing the cables. Skip that next half double and working in that next half double, work a half double crochet in the top loops and then three more back post double crochets. Half double worked in between that last stitch and next stitch and then three more back post double crochets. And then right from there we go back working those waddle stitches and go ahead and finish out row number nine with what you know what to do with those post stitches and the waddle stitches. And then begin row 10, work those front post and the half doubles work row 10 until you get to the cable and this is what it should look like after nine rows. Now for row number 10 in the cabling section I am only going to explain it because it's very straightforward. We're just going to work three front post doubles, half double and a half double, three front post, half double, three front post, half double, three front post, and you know the rest of the row. For row number 11 I'm going to give you the assignment for that as well. It's going to be three back post, half double, three back post, half double, three back post, half double, and then three back post. So go ahead and complete rows 10 and 11 and start the beginning of row 12 as well. And then I will show you what to do for row 12. Now we are at row 12 and about to cross the cables and this is the same that we did on row number eight but I'll go ahead and work this with you. Skip the next three stitches, half double, that next half double, front post, treble, and the next three stitches. Now working behind those last four stitches we're doing a back cross on this side for now. We come into that hole and we work front post trebles over each of these stitches starting with this one. And then the second one which is right here. Again using my fingers those nerve endings to help me locate the stitch and the third stitch is right here. That might be the trickiest one. After that, half double and that next half double crochet. Skip the next three stitches. Half double and that next half double and that's the point where it looks kind of strange. And then front post treble in the next three stitches working in front 
of those last four stitches we front post treble in each of these stitches starting with the one furthest away from our hook. I could say furthest to the right or to the left but depending on whether you're watching the front or the left-handed version I could be wrong so the one that's furthest away. Okay and then we return to our waddle stitches and each of those three and the remainder of the road half row half double crochet and so this is what you should have after four rows with the cabling section okay so now we are going to go ahead and turn and work the beginning of row 13 and I will show you what you can do from there so with row 13, the cable section, I'm going to talk you through what we're going to do. We're going to work three back post double crochets, a half double in between that next last stitch and next stitch, three more half doubles, skip this half double, work a half double in this stitch, three more back post doubles, half double in between the last and next stitch, and then three more back post double crochets. This is the same as row number nine. So go ahead and complete row 13. Now we are at row 14 and I'm going to give you a four row assignment. And what we're going to do for row 14 is we're going to work the front post double crochets with the half doubles in between. And then for row 15, we're going to work back post double crochets over that cable section again with the half doubles as well that will be throughout and then row 16 will be the same as row 14 just work front post double crochets and then row 17 again backside facing you'll work back post double crochets so with these four rows that we're going to be working next what you're doing is you're just growing these columns upward nothing is going to cross it's just going to be growing the four columns for the large honeycomb that we're going to be forming uh, up until this point, the stitch here is usually referred to, or I like to call it the wheat stitch or the large wheat cable, but it does have a unique construction with the heart-like symbol down here. So anyway, for rows, again, rows 14, 15, 16, and 17, just work either front or back post double crochets, work front post double crochets with the front side facing, back post double crochets with the back side facing. So go ahead and work those four rows and I'll show you what I have after I complete that. This is what your cabling section should look like after 17 completed rows. Now I've gone ahead and started row 18 and we have come to the point of crossing these cables again. And let me just talk about this a second before we actually do it. We have been working back crosses here and front crosses on this side. We're going to reverse that as we close this up. This side now is going to be working front crosses and this side will be working the back crosses. So it's going to kind of mirror what we have done down below with these cable crossings. Okay, so row number 18 we will actually be crossing these a little bit differently. So this row is different than the other rows that we've done so far. So we're going to skip the next three stitches, half double, and that half double crochet, three front post trebles, and each in one each in those next three stitches. Now, as I said before, this is where it's different. We have been working a back cross. Instead, we're going to work a front cross. We're going to work those next three treble crochets in front of those last four stitches in the front. And this will form a large honeycomb once we complete the cabling section. Once we Complete that, we half double in that center, half double crochet, and then we 
skip the next three stitches here, half double in that next half double, front post double crochets, I'm sorry, front post treble crochets, caught myself again, in the next three stitches. Again, we only use the treble, front post trebles, when we are crossing cables, at least in this particular cable system. Now we get to the other side, we're going to work a back cross coming into this hole, and again we work back, uh, front post treble crochets coming in from the back in each of these three stitches. That's one. Locate it. Two. And coming into that same space, locate that third stitch with the thumb and, and finger and go ahead and complete that. And I'm going to go ahead and work that waddle stitch in that chain one space so that I can anchor that yarn. And I want to show you how this looks after 18 rows. So you see how this column is curving back up like this to form a large honeycomb shape. So go ahead and finish row 18. And then for row 19, again, working those preliminary stitches. And when you get to the back side facing in row 19, you've worked this row before, you just work three back post double crochets, a half double in between where those cables were crossed, three more back post double crochets, half double in the center, three more back post double crochets here, a half double in between the last stitch and the next stitch, and then three more back post double crochets. So go ahead and complete row 18 and row 19. This is what you should have after completing 19 rows. Now for rows 20 and 21. For the cabling section, it's just going to be those front post double crochets and half doubles in between. So three front post, half double, three front post, half double, three front post, half double, three front post, etc. Okay, that's for row 20. And for row 21 with the back side facing, it's basically the same, but using back post double crochets. So we're just going to do back post double crochets with those half doubles in between. So go ahead and work rows 20 and 21. This is what you should have after completing 21 rows. Now I have a small assignment for you. We are going to be repeating rows 18, which is where the cables crossed here, through 21, which are which is the last row we just worked. So that's a four row repeat, 18, 19, and row 19 is where you work the half doubles where the cables were crossed, 20 is where you work the front post double crochets, and then 21 you work the back post double crochets. So after completing row 22, I've gone ahead and I've worked the next six rows, and I want to show you what this is going to look like. So in order to do this, we are going to repeat rows 18, and that's the same as what we crossed here. So I'm doing that again here. So 18, 19, 20, and 21, and then repeat rows 18 and 19 once more. Okay, so this is going to be for rows 22 through 27. And when you complete that section, this is what it will look like. If you need stitch support, to help you with rows 18 through 21, please look across the bottom of the screen. I'll have a time mark where you can go back and just one more time, work rows 18, okay, right here, 18 is down here, but we're gonna repeat that 18 through 21, and then 18 and 19 once more. Once you complete that, you should be ready to work row um, number 28 with the front side facing. Okay, so this is what you should have as we approach the cable for row 28, and this will be 
the last row. We're going to work three front post double crochets over that first column or first set of three post stitches, a half double in that next stitch. Now we are going to cross these two in a similar fashion to what we did at the very beginning to kind of give it the look of a heart down at the bottom. Okay, we're going to do it on the other end, but we're going to do it with a back cross instead of a front cross like we did to begin this square. So we're going to skip the next three stitches, half double in that next stitch, and you know the drill here, three front post treble crochets. Now we're going to work a back cross, so working behind those last four stitches, we're going to work in those three stitches that we skipped, working front post trebles. Make sure I get the right stitch as I do this. After working those three treble, front post trebles behind those four stitches, we're going to work the next half double crochet and that half double right there. And then three front post double crochets. And then we finish the row with our waddle stitches and the post three front post double crochets, half double three front post, and a half double in the turning chain. So go ahead and finish that row and then I'll show you how to begin the perimeter rounds. So this is what row 28 should look like once you complete that. And let's take a look at the square. Okay, and that center cable. Now we're going to do something really important. We're going to change from the J hook or the 6.00 millimeter and we're going to change to one size smaller. And this is a size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter. Now if you're using a different size gauge hook, that would be the hook we've been using all along, just go down one size from what you have been using. It's very important, just um, helps the stitch work that we're going to do now around the perimeter just work better. Okay, so we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our square 90 degrees to work along the row ends. And you should have 28 rows. And as we do this, we are going to end up with 42 stitches along every side of the square. So to begin, we're going to work two single crochets in the first row end and then one in the next. And we're going to repeat that all along the side. Two single crochets in the next row end and then one in the next. So go ahead and work that all the way across until you get to the next corner. And like I said, you should have 42 stitches and do be sure to count to make sure because this is going to be very important once we start stitching our squares together. After working those 42 single crochets along the side, I'm going to turn 90 degrees. I've gone ahead and chained two chains and this is for the corner. And we're going to start our first stitch opposite where that first double crochet was worked and I am working over the remainder of that original starting chain. We're going to work one stitch for each of the first seven stitches. Again, working opposite the stitches. So that's working opposite those three post stitches, half double and three post stitches. They were originally double crochets, but they do look like post stitches after the second row is worked over them. 
Okay, now that we've come to the opposite of where the wattle stitches are worked, we're going to work one stitch or one single crochet where the wattle stitch was worked and then one in that chain two, uh, those two chains that were skipped. One where the wattle stitch was formed and then one in the two skipped chains. So cross the section with the wattle stitches, you should have six stitches there. And then working, working over the large cable, we're going to have one single crochet for each of those 15 stitches. So I'll go ahead and work those 15 stitches over this cable section. That brings us back to three more of those wattle stitches. And again, one where the wattle stitch was worked and one stitch over the two skipped chains. And you should have a total of six stitches worked over that wattle stitch area. And then we are going to work the seven stitches at, towards the end here, where you have, again, the um, double crochets and the half double. Okay, and after we work that, you will have one more stitch to work, which was where the half double was worked at the end of the row. And that will give you a total of 42 stitches across that side. Let's go ahead and turn 90 degrees again and chain two for the next corner. And we're going to do just what we did along the other row ends. We're going to work two single crochets for that first row end and then one for the next. So working two and then one. So go ahead and work that to the next corner. After working those 42 stitches along that other side of the square, chain two, and I've gone ahead and turned 90 degrees and working in the top loops. This is where we started from. This is the top of the last row worked. We're going to go ahead and work one stitch in each of those first seven stitches after that we are going to work in the wattle stitches and this is how I want you to do these one single crochet in the single crochet and one in the chain one space and skip the double crochet entirely so we're just working two stitches for each of these wattle stitches and making sure that we skip that double crochet. And getting to the cable, we're going to work one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. Okay, so working on the wattle stitches, again, we work a stitch single crochet in the single crochet and one in the chain one, skipping that double crochet. I just want to be very specific how you work these just so that the squares come out even and so that when we construct them you know, together, it will be nice and even and pretty seamless. Okay, so now we work over the last seven stitches. those post stitches, half double crochet in the next three post stitches. And at the, at the end, go ahead and add an additional single crochet there, chain two, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round, just like that. And go ahead and chain one and working in that same space, we're going to work the second round 
of single crochets but this will be much easier because we're just going to work a single crochet in each stitch all the way around and when we get to the chain two we will work a corner and I will go ahead and show you once I get to the first corner so go ahead and work this to the corner and I'll show you what to do after working one stitch in each single crochet to the corner we're going to get to that chain two spot we're going to work a single crochet chain two turn 90 degrees and put another single crochet in that chain two space so you can get a good view here so you can see the corner right there and then just continue working one single crochet in each stitch all the way across each side and again when you get to the corners work a single crochet chain two single crochet in those corners go ahead and work around and I will show you the join as you come to the last corner of the perimeter round two we're going to work a single crochet chain two and a single crochet in that corner and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round go ahead and give it a chain and a tug and we're going to cut a generous generous strand that could be hidden easily within the work and so let's go ahead and take a look at this square and as you can see those rounds really do kind of even things up quite a bit and this should make these very easy to connect don't worry too much about the waviness um, of the way these ends are because I believe once we connect these up just the sheer weight of the blanket alone will kind of help to block a lot of this into place and you'll see what I mean as I get to that point if you don't believe me just watch the rest of this video and you'll see the finished item well at the beginning as well as at the end of the video okay now we are going to join our squares together with the blue yarn and you can use whichever color you want but I'm going to be using the um, the darker of the two colors and notice this photograph that I have of how I'm going to order the squares notice that I have four squares across and five squares deep or five in each column I'm going to crochet together in the order that you see from top to bottom um, a total of five squares and then I'm going to stitch the columns together I'll show you a picture of the columns laid out before I stitch those together but I just wanted to let you know that so the first square oh and also I did stack them in stacks of five and I ordered them so that each square is oriented the same way and I, I've decided to wait on hiding the loose end of the perimeter round I'll do that as we hide all the loose ends at the end since there are going to be there are going to be so many of them to deal with so that way it helped me to know that each square is oriented in the same position so I did this with the um, the fastening knot or where I joined um, at the upper right and with the blue square it's in the lower left you can do this however you want but I'm just saying that it's just one thing that helps me to orient okay now when we join these together we're gonna have the front sides facing upwards it's a little bit different but the reason for that is the texture that we're joining with from we're gonna start in the chain two corner and we're gonna end in this chain two corner and we're gonna fasten off at the end of every time we join the squares for the columns but when we join the columns we're just going to have one long uh, seam joining those columns which will be very nice and will help to stabilize these squares so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to begin and we are using the neural stitch and I am using the smaller of the two crochet hooks this is the size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter now if you need to go to a different size hook as in a smaller hook um, in order to make this neural stitch work 
for you, by all means do it. Use whichever hook gives you the best, most uniform seam as we join these. So I'm going to stick my hook in both of those chain two spaces. I'm going to make a slip knot. And then I'm going to join the two. This chain. Now I'm going to start with the neural stitch and it's this the stitch is different in that it's worked from left to right if you're right-handed and from right to left if you're left-handed which is the opposite direction and so what we're going to do is we're going to put our hook through both loops of that first stitch and the first stitch of the back the, the first square okay pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two it's basically a backward single crochet so if we put our hook into the first two and the next two pull up a loop yarn over and pull through my thumb is holding on to that first loop that's on the hook already holding it like so and that does help me to get a very even stitch so I'll do this a little bit more I do have some stitch videos on my home um, home channel on the neural stitch where I give you more detail so if you need to watch some of those feel free to do that I'll try to put the links in the video description but if I forget to do that, you can always go to the home page and just put Neural, K-N-U-R-L, in that search bar or any stitch or video that you are looking for, and it should bring that up for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue working this across the row, but let me show you how this join looks. And I think you'll see that this is quite a, a, quite a nice join. And it is going to help to even out some of the waviness where the cables are joined. So go ahead and finish this across and I'll show you the fasten off at the end. After having worked this all the way across, when you get to the chain two corners, we're going to work a reverse slip stitch. So we bring up a loop and bring the loop through. Don't, don't make it into a reverse single crochet. Let me go ahead and do that for you one more time just so that it's clear. We put the hook into both of those chain two corners, pull the loop through and pull it through. Go ahead and pull it a little bit more tightly and give it a chain. And so now we will fasten this off and let's go ahead and take a look at the seam. You can see that already has straightened that that waviness here out quite a bit. And as additional squares are added and the weight of this blanket will actually help to self block. So don't worry excessively about blocking before you put these together. Because like I said, the, the weight of this whole thing is going to pull and tug at it. It's going to be fine. Okay, so now we're going to add... A white square. Let me grab that one. And I'm keeping the orientation of the square the same as the last one. And so I will simply join the yarn again in this chain two corner and work that neural stitch or reverse single crochet all the way across. And in the corner here, work that reverse slip stitch. So go ahead and do this until you have five in the column and make sure that when you're making your columns that you know half some of the um, or half of them will start with the white square at the top and the other half will start with the blue square. Okay so make sure that you have that order so you don't have to undo any of your work. So go ahead and do those four columns with five squares each and then I will show you what mine looks like when it's all laid out on the floor before I connect all the others the connect the columns that is all right I have put these together and you can already see that some of the lines have gotten better 
especially here because I have completed all the horizontal joins. Now what I need to do is complete the join that will join all of these columns. So I'm going to have four columns to join together. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to join them in the same way. I'm going to start really, um, I'm going to start at, at one end right at the top join in the chain two spaces just like I showed you. We're going to make one continuous seam from the top down to the bottom of each column. And as I do that, I am also going to stitch where the chain twos are. So also put a neural stitch in each of those chain twos as you go. And I think you'll find that even as you complete these these um, one, two, three long seams that is going to help to naturally block this out even more so. If you feel like you need to do additional blocking, definitely feel free to do that, but I don't think it's really going to be necessary for most yarn types or at least of the acrylic yarn that I, I've chosen for this. So um, go ahead and do that and then we'll go on to the finishing of the trim at the ends and the border on the outside or the perimeter rounds. Now that we have connected all of our squares into one big beautiful blanket, it's time to work some perimeter rounds. We're going to join in any corner, doesn't matter which corner of the blanket. I'm going to go ahead and make my slip knot and then I'm going to make a chain to join. Now the corners are going to be worked a little bit differently than we have worked the squares. And so instead of working chains, you know, single crochets and chains, we're just going to work three single crochets in that corner. One, two, and three. So that is what you're going to work in the four corners, this being one of them, the four main corners of the blanket. When you get to the other corners, and I'll show you that in just a second, we're just going to work a single crochet. So we're going to work a single crochet in each stitch all the way across the blanket in every square. Okay, so it's going to be quite a, quite a few stitches here as we work across. So I'm going to go ahead and work across until I get to the, the next place where these squares were joined. Once we get to the point where the squares were joined, we are going to work a single crochet in that chain two of the, of the blue square and then go over to the next chain two of the lighter colored square. And then just continue on all the way around the blanket. But just remember when you get to the main corners of the blanket, the four corners, that you work three single crochets in each of those stitches. Okay. Now, once you go all the way around the blanket, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round, and then you're going to fasten off. After that, you're going to join the lighter color and work another round with the single crochets only, just the way we work the first round. After that round, you're going to fasten off again and then rejoin the blue yarn for yet a third round of single crochets. Again, doing the same thing that we did for round number one. Uh, now, when you join the yarn, it can be in really any stitch you like. I'm going to keep mine confined to the corners. So I may just join to the main corner, which would be the third stitch of the corner every time I join my new yarn. So go ahead and finish round one and then complete rounds two and three. Again, blue, then white, and then blue. And then I'll show you what I have and work the next round. These are how the perimeter rounds after working three of those with the blue and then the cream and then the blue again. Now for round number four, this is the perimeter round. I'm going to join the cream again. We're going to do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain four. We're going to be using the taller stitch. This time we're going to be using treble crochets. 
and we're going to work one treble. I'm going to start in the very next stitch, not in the stitch with the chain that's going to serve as a treble crochet. And we're going to work one treble in each stitch. So go ahead and work that until you get to the corner and I'll show you what to do for that. Once we get to the corner, which is the middle stitch of those three single crochets that are crocheted together, we're going to work seven treble crochets in that same space. It's going to be a lot of stitches in there, but we're going to be turning a pretty big corner here. Okay, so let's pause. So that is your corner with the seven treble crochets. After that, we just continue working one treble crochet in each stitch until we get to the next corner. And again, you work seven treble crochets in that corner. So that is how you would work round number four. And when you join, you're going to join to the top chain of that chain four. And then you will fasten off. And then again, you can rejoin anywhere you wish. Uh, I may go back to joining in the center corner, which is going to be the fourth um, treble crochet of the corner. And then I'm going to repeat rounds one, two, and three one more time, which is working the single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch, three single crochets in the corner um, all the, you know, in each of the four corners. And again, I will change to the blue and then back to the cream and then back to the blue again. So, and after you work those three rounds, you're going to fasten off and we're going to hide all of our loose strands. I've decided to go ahead and block this project because the outer perimeter rounds were a little bit on the curly side and I don't have enough blocks to block this all at once. So I'm doing it little by little. And so I have the second round or second day of blocking just kind of laid out there for you with my, um, with my pins. And this is after blocking, I'll put a picture in right here of what it looked like before I blocked this. And you can just see that really does smooth it out. And I'm just using a spray bottle. Once I get this situated where I like it, I just spray it lightly with water and let it dry overnight. And it takes a lot of that curl right out. And if you're concerned about any um, less than straight lines on the squares, I, I will say that um, blocking, like what I'm doing here, has taken out a lot of that. Just crocheting it together also removes more. When you, if you have a quilt rack, you can hang this on um, or, you know, hang it over a shower curtain or something like that. Just the weight of this will help to straighten um, out it out as well. All right. So this is blocking. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the cable loved throw with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to post in the comments below. God bless. Bye-bye.